Good afternoon. See, I'm keeping my hand on my coffee so I don't okay. spill it. I was really worried that it was going to end up everywhere. It wouldn't be the first time. I know. <laughs> so today, we're going to talk about Cushing's disease. Yes. Why are you so excited about it? I'm excited about everything. No, you're not. <laughs> Sometimes you are. I'm excited about learning. But you already know what you're excited about teaching, you mean. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you learning. Oh, Other okay. people learning. Yeah. Yeah. But I also like learning myself, so that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a song that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. This is our song. Except that it's our song. Our song. Yeah. Yeah. We danced, danced to this song at my wedding. We did. Because <laughs> that's the kind of people that we are. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yeah. I hope I queued it up okay. Oh. The hot July moon saw everything. My first taste of love. No one could ever see the green on the line. Like strawberry wine. I'm just amazed that we both know this song. Um, because that was popular like when I was in high school. I was so you weren't in like born yet. I was born. <laughs> I was just in like middle school. When I was in high school? No, I was in middle school when you were in college. Yeah, we 10 yeah. years apart. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't in high school that long. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you weren't very smart then. Mm. Maybe I was. Maybe I had to repeat a couple times. Yeah. A couple, five or six times. That's fine. No judgment. But yeah, that is one of the few songs mm -hmm. that we both yeah. already knew. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Cushing's disease. Yeah. What is it? Hypoadrenocorticoidism. Say the first part again. Hypo. Hyper. 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 Adrenocorticism. So, what that means is what? Do you remember? No. Okay. So, basically, in the simplest terms, the body is producing too, too much, much cortisol. Cortisol. Yeah. So, you knew it. Yeah. You know stuff. You just don't remember that you know stuff. Uh, so, the body is producing too much cortisol. Uh, there's a couple of reasons that that can happen. Actually, should we talk about symptoms first, or should we talk about mechanisms and testing? Let's talk about... Mechanisms and testing. We okay. always talk about symptoms. Because then I can bust out my fancy. Yay, drawing. I haven't seen it yet. I'm oh, excited. it's very exciting. This is why I'm not an artist. <laughs> Look, this is my fancy drawing. I oh, think it's a pretty good one, though, actually. Yeah, that this is pretty is good. This is way better of a generic mammal than what I usually do. Um, so, Here, here's, our, here's our little bit. You know I can't point to things and talk at the same time. Um, so, cortisol. It's produced by the adrenal gland, which lives next to the kidney. That's the, it looks like it's a, a wonky heart. It's a kidney. Whatever. That's a okay. Again, not an artist. Uh, so this is where the adrenal gland lives. It produces cortisol. Um, it produces cortisol um, by being told to produce it by the pituitary gland, which is up in the brain. That little squiggly thing is a brain. <laughs> I don't have to explain it. Um, so, pituitary gland produces a hormone called ACTH that tells the adrenal gland to produce cortisol. As cortisol levels rise in a normal, healthy animal, it turns down the ACTH. Because it's like, okay, we already got enough. We don't need any more. Stop making Chill it. Chillax and stop making it for a minute. And then if the cortisol levels drop, then we get an increase in ACTH, again, in a normal, healthy animal, which then tell the adrenal gland to produce more cortisol. So that's how we get our balance. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that cool? I'm actually pretty impressed by this drawing. It looks pretty good. <laughs> I'm basically a textbook illustrator now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great brain and... Mm -hmm. Like you can almost make out kidney. what I was yeah. drawing. Yeah. Almost. There, we'll give you a close-up of that. It looks like maybe a, a three-year-old could have drawn it. I don't know. It's yeah. pretty 
pretty good. Mm -hmm. And look, I used my best handwriting. You can you can read the words. They can tell that it says cortisol. Yeah. And A C T H. They can. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. You should be proud of me. I am very proud. So that's so that's in a normal animal. So in animals that have Cushing's disease, that means that they are producing cord too much cortisol for one of two reasons. Either the adrenal gland has just gone off on its own, it's just doing its own thing, producing way too much cortisol, and it does not care what the ACTH is telling it to do. So in those cases, they typically have um, an adrenal gland tumor, which may or may not be malignant, um, but usually all it's doing is it's just producing too much cortisol. Um, it's usually just one adrenal gland, so they have two because they live next to both kidneys. They have two kidneys, they have two adrenal glands. Two. Dose. Dose. Um, so usually in that case, it's just one of the adrenal glands that's misbehaving. Um, so one of the treatment options is to go in and remove that one. <laughs> misbehaving. It's misbehaving. It's doing what that's supposed to be doing. Um, so one of the treatment options is to go remove that adrenal tumor. Okay. Um, more commonly, I think that we see is what is called pituitary dependent Cushing's disease. So meaning that there's a problem in the pituitary gland in the brain that's producing too much ACTH. It's what's misbehaving. <laughs> it says, can misbehave. I don't care. I don't care what the cortisol level is in the blood. I'm just going to keep cranking out this ACTH and I'm going to keep telling my adrenal gland to produce more and more cortisol and I don't care. That's usually more commonly what we see, truthfully, um, but there's tests that differentiate between the two and things. So that's, that's the, the basic gist of how that happens. Um, so our typical patient that we see, so like the textbook patient, it's usually, not always, usually a little white dog, so like a Maltese or a Bichon, or a Westie, or something along those lines, little white dog um, that has a pot belly. Um, he's not fat, so like if we feel over the ribs and we're feeling over the spine, his body condition score is normal, um, so we don't have a lot of excess fat accumulation there, but has a big like pot belly, beer belly looking it's kind of like a puppy it's with saggy. a lot of worms. Yeah, kind of like a puppy with a lot of worms. You know, they're not, they're not fat yet, yeah. but they've got that but big But they get that big belly. belly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's like that. Um, they also commonly have, remember we talked about in hormone disorders, we commonly see bilaterally symmetrical hair loss on their back. They usually have that. Um, they a lot of the times have blackheads as well. Yeah. What's the other word for the that? Do you remember? Comedones. I know you know it. Yeah, comedones. comedones. Um, I'm a YouTube certified dermatologist. That is true. That is true. Shout out to Dr. Sandra Lee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Love so we have her. alopecia and comedones. Yes. Mm -hmm. They also can get what's called is calcinosis cutis. Oh, did you learn about that in your YouTube dermatology class? Is, are those like if you had to horns, guess? What do you think it is? Like the um, it's almost like a white head that's like mm -hmm. ruptured. Hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Because it's like little calcium deposits in the skin. Mm -hmm. That's so See? smart. You know these me. things. You did learn it in your YouTube. My mom's dermatology so proud degree. Of me. <laughs> um. So they will also typically they pant a lot. They drink a lot. They pee a lot. They act like they're starving. I feel like they always have, like, greasy skin. Yeah, like their skin's just not good. Like, it looks no, just it's, the best. It's gross. They're kind of a train wreck. Mm -hmm. um, because they also commonly have hypothyroidism along with the Cushing's. Those two things kind of go hand in hand. Um, so then, like, any of the symptoms that we see with hypothyroidism in dogs, we can also see in Cushing's, too. So they can have the rat tail. They could be heat seeking. I hate the rat tail. The rat tail. <laughs> I hate it. So basically, so a lot of these symptoms um, are are the same things that we see side effects wise um, when an animal is on steroids. The reason for that is cortisol is basically the body's steroid hormone um, that it produces normally. So you need steroid hormone 
um, to help your body cope with things like stress. So it needs to be there just in very small amounts. So when we start seeing large amounts, just like if we're treating an animal for like allergies with, with prednisone, uh, that's a much higher dose than, than what their body would normally make. So that's when we start seeing those other, those other side effects that are super annoying. Oh, that's, that's your personal message. Don't message her while she's on Facebook Live. Oh, who messaged me? It says Jessie. Oh. <laughs> Where do you see that? It's like blinking oh, at, the oh, at the top. Oh, and then, So I thought somebody what like commented. What, what does he say? Oh, he says, how's it going? Oh. Uh, okay. I don't see the next part. <laughs> well, it's not inappropriate. No, it'll you just make me blush. Oh, okay. Then I won't say. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so it's like being on steroids all the time. Uh, in fact, there is a type of Cushing's called iatrogenic Cushing's. Ooh. Meaning we caused it. Yes. Meaning medication. that medication or something, some kind of medical intervention caused it. Um, so like, you know, we're giving them steroids and so they have all of these same symptoms as for Cushing's disease, but you fix it by taking away the steroids. Done. Cured. Awesome. Uh, versus in, in a regular case of Cushing's, it's far more complicated than that. Um, uh, what else about, like, symptoms? Is there anything else? I think that's all I got. Yeah, I think that's it. Mm. I mean, since you talked about steroids, say a little bit, like, don't just stop giving steroids because of the side effects. Oh, yeah, just, like, in general. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Just in life. Follow the directions. They're there for a reason. When you're supposed to finish all the medication, please do it. When it says to taper our medication, please do it. Yeah. <laughs> Bad things can happen. Bad if you things just can stop happen. Steroids and I promise middle. these directions are not just for our health. <laughs> it's not just because I think it's fun to make it do things. Um, so testing for Cushing's disease. So we usually will start with just a general, again, just a general blood panel that's going to check like kidney values, liver values, um, red blood cell counts, white blood cell counts. Um, so what is one thing on a chemistry panel that we will see that is pretty significantly elevated in most Cushing's patients? You want a hint? Is it ACTH? No, we don't check that. Wow. Yeah. Would you like me to go through some of the values that we check on a chemistry panel? Yeah, sure. BUN, creatinine, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, ALT. ALP, cholesterol, bilirubin. Keep going. I want to see how many you can name. <laughs> Glucose. <laughs> Chloride. Is it the calcium? <laughs> Is it the creatinine? No, I don't know. The B N. No, no. The, those are kidney values. I don't know. ALP, alkaline phosphatase. Do you know why? Is that re- okay? It doesn't ring a bell. No. Okay, cool. Not at all. Your teacher sucked. <laughs> yes, she <it> did. <laughs> Amy. Amy. <laughs> oh, uh, she could come busted in here like the Kool Aid Man. What? Uh huh. No, she wouldn't because she knows we're on the live. Yeah, she doesn't want to be on here. Hmm. So ALP. So ALP. While we typically think of it as a um, liver value. There are different types of ALP that we kind of just like lump in all together and like the machines that we run the blood work on don't differentiate between, what are you doing? You don't want me to look at you? I don't want you to ask me more questions, no. but I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it's coming. I'll, I'll, I'll lob you a soft one here in a second. Thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, so there's different types of ALP. Um, so there's ALP that comes from bone, there's ALP that comes from liver, and there's ALP that comes from steroids, cortisol, um, in dogs, specifically, We're talking about dogs. Um, so it, when it's elevated in a patient with Cushing's, it's not necessarily because of their, because of their liver, if there's anything wrong with that, it's because of the steroid hormone, the cortisol being elevated. So... Um, that's one big, and we're talking like big elevations. So normal ALP, it's like two or 300. It's not, it's not a lot, but when we're looking at elevations of ALP, we're talking about big elevations. So like 2000 plus typically. Um, so we'll see that be, 
be high. Um, we may also see the other liver value, ALT, be elevated a little bit. Um, part of that pot belly appearance is a little bit of liver enlargement in these guys. Um, so that's, it does kind of affect the liver as well. It's just not the reason for the ALT being up. Uh, so those are, you know, our usual kind of things that we'll see screening wise. They may also have high cholesterol because they're also hypothyroid. Uh, if we check the T4, it's low. Um, but those are the most common things that we see on just a screening blood panel. So we see something like that. We put it together with the, the symptoms that the pet is showing. Um, and we say, okay, we need to do some further testing. We need to get this diagnosed because that's, that alone is not enough to diagnose them. It's enough to say, well, they're suspicious for it, but not to treat them. Um, so we'll do a couple different tests. I like, personally, I do the low-dose dexamethasone suppression test. Do you know what that one is? Do you remember how that one works? Well, they come in. Mm -hmm. We draw blood yep. first. Yep. And then, what is it, six? No, two hours later? It's, we give them a shot. Yes, yeah, so we give them a shot of, um, of dexamethasone, dex which is a short-acting steroid. Injectable, yeah. And then two hours after that. No, you said I four. think it's four and eight hours. Four. And then we draw more blood. Yeah. So we send off ideally three blood samples. So the pre, the four hours post, and the eight hours post. We haven't done one of those in a long time. Yeah. That probably just jinxed us. Now we're going to do like a million of them. Nah, oh well. <laughs> At least they're, they're not. They're not hard. too bad. They're yeah. not too bad. It's just, it's just like Time they have to like keep coming back, or they have to stay here all day or something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's that's my preferred next test uh, because based on their response to that test, it also helps to tell us if it's adrenal dependent or if it's pituitary dependent. So that's why I like that one, whereas other tests that are available don't necessarily, they'll confirm that they have Cushing's, um, but doesn't really tell us which version it is. And like I said, other than trying to rule out adrenal dependent, just in case somebody would be interested in going to have an adrenal gland removed, um, it's not really terribly important, but it's also a less expensive test. So... What? I'm getting Are more you love reading letters. Secret messages yeah. on your on your what? My husband says, I love you. Have a great day. Oh. What a sweet guy. What a sweet guy. Um, so that's <coughs> that's what I do. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> so classy. <laughs> this is why your husband doesn't send you messages. This is why my husband doesn't watch. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so then we'll, from there, so we've confirmed they've got Cushing's and we'll move on to treatment. Um, other tests that may end up being done, especially if we determine that it is adrenal dependent, um, would be an ab abdominal ultrasound. So looking to see if indeed one of the adrenal glands is enlarged and if so, which one, and then they can talk about surgery potentially. That's not a surgery I do. Those adrenal glands are teeny tiny. There's all kinds of like super big important vessels in that area. Mm -mm, I don't touch that. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> that's a whole lot of nope. <laughs> um, so that's something we would refer them to a, a boarded surgeon to have that done. Um, so once we have them diagnosed, if if surgery is out of the question or it's just not adrenal dependent, whatever, and we're looking at medications. Um, so back in the day, you know. 300 years ago, <laughs> that was a wee babe <laughs> in vet school. Um, they had really only like one truly effective option, um, which is mitotane, also known as lysadrine. Um, that medication basically killed off layers of the adrenal gland. So it's kind of it's kind of like chemotherapy. I don't know that it's really classified as chemotherapy. Uh, but basically it was killing off the adrenal gland and, and the goal was to kill it off enough that they weren't overproducing the cortisol anymore, but not so much that we've eliminated their ability to produce cortisol. I'm sorry that I'm boring you. It's okay. Uh, so I'll get, that, I'll make it through. Because they still, they have to have some, otherwise they end up in what's called Addison's, which is bad and can be very quickly life threatening. So 
that's that's not a great place to be. So that that one was a tricky um, treatment. And I mean, it's it's still available. It's still a thing. I'm sure somebody's still using it. Uh, but thankfully, in the past, it's actually only been like ten years. Um, <laughs> in the past ten years or so, now we have a medication called Trilistane that was previously only available um, overseas. I think it was like Europe had it. They were they were licensed there, but it wasn't licensed here. Um, so it has since been licensed here. The brand name for it is Veteril. Um, so that is the treatment of choice, especially for pituitary dependent Cushing's. Um, so it tells the, uh, the adrenal gland to turn down the production of cortisol, but doesn't kill off the adrenal gland. So obviously that's superior because if we, you know, if we start over treating them, so taking them too low on their cortisol, we can just back off on the dose and it'll come back up and we're, we're all good. Whereas if you're killing off the adrenal gland, you can hope that it's gonna regrow, but it, it probably isn't. So uh, you suck. That's bad. That sucks. Yeah, that sucks. Although they also used to, with the mitotane, um, there was a treatment protocol where they would intentionally basically like, I don't say overdose it, but like use big doses um, and kill off that part of the adrenal gland that produces the cortisol and intentionally make them Addisonian and then treat the Addisons. So they would like do both at the same time. They like do the like the, the mitotane, so you're killing off the adrenal gland and then also give them prednisone because you know you're gonna end up in Addisonian crisis otherwise and treat them with the medication to, to get the electrolytes balanced. We'll talk about Addisons next week, but um, so that was, that was a protocol because it was so hard to get it regulated with the mitotain. So sometimes they were like, well, it's just easier to be like, you know what, we're just gonna kill off the whole thing and then just supplement them with these other things and that's easier to manage. But now that's that's not the case though. Now we do Vetaril, um, which works way better. There is follow-up that needs to happen to make sure that we're, again, giving them enough, but not too much, um, making sure their electrolytes stay good. Um, so there's follow-up testing that goes into that that unfortunately is is not cheap. That's that's one of the big issues I think with Cushing's disease is it's it's an expensive disease. The medication is expensive. The testing is expensive. Especially um, if you have a big dog. Uh, especially if you have a big dog that has to be on like multiple sizes of Vetaril. Oh, that's wicked. Um, so not fun. And um, but once you get them regulated, they do well. And a lot of the signs and symptoms that we talked about at the beginning improve or resolve. Um, I'm sorry. I'm so tired. You want some of my coffee? No, I have my drink. I'm so tired. Uh, So they do, I mean, they, they, once they get regulated, they do well. So it's just getting to that point. Like I said, it's, it's, unfortunately, it's a big expense up front. I mean, we're talking about some of these tests are like $400 or more. And it's like, dang, you got to do that. And an ultrasound, which is another like 500. And then we have to do the medication, which is like, whatever, like a hundred something dollars a month or more. And then also do another follow-up test to make sure that we're dosing them okay. Mm-hmm. And I guess you better hope that they got it right from the start, because otherwise you gotta do another one. Yeah. Not, it's not it's not fun. It's something that you have to be prepared for for sure. Um and so that's that's definitely a conversation that we have when we start getting into that. And then we balance too. You know, we we talk about um, you know, what are their signs and symptoms right now versus, you know treatment like if the symptoms are bad then treatment's a good way to go if they're fairly mild i've had people before they're like you know what we're just gonna watch it for now it is what it is um or they'll try some alternative therapies and see if it helps at all because it's pretty mild or because they just don't have the finances um to afford all that testing and i get it um unfortunately there's not like other tests that we can do that are cheaper that's not really a thing. So now you're spending money on the tests that aren't really helpful. Yeah. And then well, we're that's kind of a waste. Having, yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to end up having to do the other tests mm-hmm. anyway. So yeah. So that's, yeah, that's, that's, so that's a conversation to have for sure. You know, if you're worried that your pet has Cushing's, um, you know, when you're getting into that with your veterinarian, talking about what are the expectations as far as, you know, what are you going to have to plan for financially? Because I think that's important to know. Oh, yeah. For sure. And I don't know, like, 
I feel like probably if you tried to hurry up and get insurance, they probably wouldn't cover it for some period of time. So I don't think that you could like do that. That's that would be insurance fraud. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. But that would that would be you know that would be a good reason to have insurance on your pet already, because then it would cover those sorts of things. So um, anything else? We talked about treatment testing. Hmm. Symptoms, you're just gonna keep yawning. Crystal's gonna take a nap. I told her she should just Facebook Live me napping today. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't go for it. I wonder why. I don't know. Hmm. Everyone would love to watch you sleep, though. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, that's all I have. Do you have anything more interesting to say? You were out after the song. You're like, just the song. That's all I want to do today. Um, I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> well, I will say, like, my brain hasn't really been working today. I told you earlier, you know, I just have to do like mm-hmm. some mindless tasks today. Mm-hmm. Um, the renovations still going on my house. Mm-hmm. So uh, every day a little closer. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's getting there. Every day a little closer. There. More exciting. It's looking good. I came to work last week. Well, no, that was earlier this week earlier with this week. <laughs> drywall dust all over my shoes because my That's house was just covered. Everything mm-hmm. was covered in drywall dust. Yeah, because when they come in and sand, then it's just yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Especially that big of an area. It's, so I came there's in. There's no avoiding it. I was like, sorry, I kind of look like a hobo. There's nowhere in my house <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, clean at the moment. Um, so if you see me and I look like a hobo, that's why. <laughs> she promises to do better once everything's done. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> wow. If you see me after my house is done, I still look like a hobo. <laughs> just mind just your, just like, mind your business. Just, just <laughs> turn the other way. Just pretend not to see her. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know. It is. It's, it's getting there. Mm-hmm. One it step is. at a time. One step at a time. We're going to make a clock. I'm sure. just really excited about that. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Are these the kinds of exciting things that you asked me that you sure. thought I would talk about? Sure. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, what's okay. exciting for you? Nothing. Putting up decorations. <laughs> so Taking weird. down Christmas decorations yeah. so that I can put up Valentine's Day decorations. Yeah. We did start because that's down. we talked about that earlier today. That I I'm that person, but I have decorations for every holiday. Yeah, go ahead and name all the holidays you have decorations. For I have day. Christmas and Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day and Easter, and then I have like just like patriotic things for like Memorial Day and Labor Day and Fourth of July. Um, but then after that, then we transition to fall, and then we sprinkle in some <laughs> Halloween ones for Halloween. Then take away the Halloween for just the fall, like for like Thanksgiving, and then it's Christmas time again. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things that bring me joy. I don't know. I mean, it's the little things, mm-hmm. man. I have. I don't have kids. Some Christmas. It's fine. And. And that's it. You said you got one. <laughs> wall, the the window sticker that I got one on decal. my extra clearance after Halloween one year that. I think it fell behind the storage stuff in my basement. And I think it's oh. still there on the ground. Yeah. It's never been opened. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. If you think of any questions about Cushing's, let us know. Or if you have questions for next week about Addison's. Um, so that's going to be the opposite of Cushing's. We'll talk about that next week. So we will see you then. Have a wonderful weekend.